Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting differential equation. I call this equation interesting because we have y double prime on the left hand side instead of y prime. So we have the second derivative of y being equal to a function of y tangent y times secant squared y. These kinds of equations are definitely harder to solve and there was a problem that I made a while ago and I think Michael Penn also made a similar video. Anyways, I think that was something like y double prime is equal to e to the power y. Anyways, this let's take a look at this problem. We're going to be using some substitution here. We're going to integrate and some of the solutions are going to be quite complicated. So I'm going to show you what Wolfram Alpha offers for the solution. And hopefully someone can shed light on where that comes from. OK, great. So let's go ahead and do this. We have y double prime, we don't have y prime. If we had y double prime and y prime, we could set y prime equal to u, and then that would reduce the degree, right? So we would get a first derivative or the order, right? That's what it's called, yeah. See, this is kind of like a second order, and we don't have the first derivative. So that's kind of problematic. We don't even have y by itself. So that's kind of weird. But we can still use substitution. And in this case, since the derivative of tangent is secant squared, it would make sense if I call this whole thing something like u. You like that? Okay, let's call that u, and that means u is equal to tangent y. Now you gotta remember, y is a function of x, and this is a function of y. So we have a function of x on the right hand side, but we can't just directly integrate because we don't know what y is. We're trying to solve for y, right? So that's the problem, that's the challenge. But after Calling this u, we can kind of think about the derivative of u, which is going to give us a first derivative, which is good, by the way. So from here, u prime is going to be, you have to be careful, because y is a function of x, so we have to use the chain rule. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, then I have to multiply by y prime. Make sense? Sort of, right? Okay, great. If you if this was, this was an x, tangent x, the derivative of x would be 1, so we would not write it. Okay? Now, how can I use this expression in my equation? First of all, I have two things that I can use. I have tangent y in my equation, which I called u, and I have secant squared, which I can call something else. But secant squared is not by itself, so let's go ahead and isolate secant squared and write it as u prime over y prime. Just the ratio of two derivatives, right? Great. And can we call this du over dx over dy over dx? and then kind of write this as du over dx times dx over dy. And I know some people are thinking, these are not fractions. Well, they act like fractions, so I can kind of cancel these out. And this should give me du over dy. So the derivative of u with respect to y. And that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Sort of, right? OK, great. Let's see. Now, let's go ahead and plug it in, right? We have y double prime on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, we have tangent y, which is u, and then secant squared is u prime divided by y prime. Great. Now I have y prime and y double prime, which is good, and I can put them on the same side. Let's go ahead and multiply. y prime times y double prime equals u times u prime. So it's kind of like a function times its derivative and another function times its derivative. Wait a minute. Did you say a function? Yes, I called y prime a function because it is. The y double prime is the derivative of y prime, right? The second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. In other words, let's do a little bit of notation, shall we? y prime is dy over dx, and y double prime can be called d squared y over dx squared. It's kind of like a weird notation. I think it's from Newton or Leibniz, something like that. But this basically means that d over dx means take the derivative. And the second derivative means take the derivative of the first derivative. When you put these guys together, these are kind of multiplied, and that gives us d squared y. But at the bottom, we kind of get something like dx squared, but we don't write it that way. We write it as dx squared instead. Just a notation. Don't take it too seriously. Let's proceed. All right, cool. Now, what do we do with this? So at this point, it might be a little uh, too much. So let's go ahead and think about it this way. Can I integrate both sides? I just want to integrate the left-hand side because the right-hand side is very similar. How do you integrate something like this, right? Well, I can use the u substitution, can't I? 
if this is well I already used you so I have to uh, I didn't use you but I just used the letter U so let's call this T okay fine and this will be DT so this will be T DT and that is T squared divided by 2 I'm not including the constant because I'm gonna write that at the end so don't just bear with me okay don't give me a hard time <laughs> okay it's okay if you do uh, now T squared divided by 2 so what is T T is this one in other words this is the derivative of y prime squared divided by 2. Make sense? It's the derivative of this. Kind of makes sense? Think about it. How do you differentiate y prime squared? Well, first of all, you have to take care of the power. You reduce the power. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside from chain rule, which is y double prime. N divided by 2. Ta-da! We get the same expression. You see how that works? Okay, you could also guess kind of like, okay, what does this look like? So if, and this one is fairly simple. It's just one order down. And that's just going to be u squared over 2 and the derivative of that. Make sense? Because if you differentiate u squared, you get u times u prime times 2. And divide by 2, you'll get the idea. Okay, cool. Now, we checked our work. It works. And now, we're going to go ahead and clear the 2s because those are just four constants, and then we have the derivative on both sides. Now, what do you what do you do when you have derivative like f prime is equal to g prime? You integrate, and that, this gives you f is equal to g prime plus a constant. That's what we're going to do. y prime squared is equal to u squared plus a constant. Awesome. Great. Now, we've got a back substitute. <laughs> Things are very complicated, right? Bear with me. Just remember, hopefully you took note, u is equal to tangent y, right? So, we can go ahead and replace u with tangent y, that's going to give us tangent squared y plus c. Now at this point, I know, you want to take the square root, there's going to be two of them, plus minus, but let's just go with the positive, because the other one is going to be similar. So from here, let's just assume that y prime can be written as the square root of tangent squared y plus c. Awesome. And then what am I going to do? <laughs> okay, again, I have a function of y, but notice that we were able to reduce the order. So now we have the first derivative only. And this can be turned into a separable equation, or should I call this a separable equation? It's separable, so we can separate them. Let's go ahead and put the y here, I mean the tangent squared thingy, under the radical, right? And that's going to equal dx. At this point, ta-da, we integrate both sides, and sh we should be done, right? <laughs> Not so easy, because we have to look at different cases. The value of c plays a very important role. You'll see in a little bit what important role that it plays. But I want to simplify things. You know, just like with complex numbers, we kind of look at the principal value, simpler cases, right? Obviously, you want to feel good about it. So if c is equal to 0, we're going to get something super nice. And I'm just going to assume tangent y on that interval is positive. So its square root is going to be just tangent y. And this can be written as cotangent, which is cosine over sine. And then this can be solved with the u substitution, but let's not use u. Let's just use z. I don't know. If z is equal to sine y, this is going to be dz. So this can be written as ln of absolute value. Again, let's avoid absolute value. I'm trying to avoid all the complications. Keeping it super duper simple. But anyways, on the right hand side, we get dx, which is x plus c. Wow, that was easy. So we got ln sine y is equal to x plus c. Of course, this is if c is equal to 0. And from here, the base is e. So I can write this as sine y is equal to e to the x plus c, which can be written as e to the x times e to the c. And e to the c is another constant, which I can write as e ke to the x. If sine y is equal to ke to the x, I can arc sine both sides. Arc sine of sine y is going to be y. So y can be written as arc sine k e to the x where k is a constant but again this is oversimplification if c is equal to zero now what happens if c does not equal zero then we're gonna go into big 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 trouble so here's what here is my attempt i just tried to expand this and kind of wrote it this way and i'm thinking maybe why are stress substitution do you think that's going to help us you can definitely give it a try but i'm just going to show you the answer because it's pretty interesting. If c does not equal 0, we get a solution like this. Are you serious? Oh, I think I included the wrong solution, so I forgot to paste it. Anyways, um, I'll share the picture with you. How about that? Because the solution was supposed to include 
tangent hyperbolic inverse. Anyways, I'm going to share that with you and pin a comment. So hopefully you can take a look at the picture. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.